Hi, my name is Terry and welcome to Terry Scroll Shop. The purpose of these videos is to introduce you to the fun, the craft, the art, whatever you want to call it, of scroll sawing. When uh, people see things that I've cut on my scroll saw, they often ask me, how do you do that? Do you use a laser? Well, no, we use a scroll saw. And so I wanted to show you how we do that voodoo that we do that you can do so well. So let's take a look at some of the projects that I've cut on my scroll saw. Well, here's a look at just some of the things that I've done with my scroll saw over the years. There are hundreds of different projects that you can do with your scroll saw. Yeah, I even know someone that makes bowls with a scroll saw that looks exactly like they were turned on a lathe. You can't tell the difference, but a lathe never touched them. Let's take a look at some of the different types of scroll saw work. First of all, we're going to talk a little bit about fret work. Now, these three pieces that I have here on the table are examples of fretwork, and what makes them fretwork are these little openings, as you see in the intricate style of the pattern. This is a music staff, and there's one that matches it on the other side, and uh, we put these together to make a box, and of course, uh, do you catch the irony? It's a music note box. <laughs> these are note papers in here. Then you go to the next uh, piece that I have here, it is a, an iPad stand. You can put your iPad on this or your electronic tablet, read it at the breakfast table. Again, you see the little openings, uh, frets in the, uh, in the pattern, and these are cut one at a time in all of these pieces. Next, my friend Hootie, I just finished the other day. Uh, took me about two or three days to do this, about two hours each day. Uh, yeah, I probably could have cut it all in one setting, but uh, let's, let's face it, I'm passionate, not obsessed. Down uh, here we have some uh, ornaments. We have a very plain one that you can cut out. It's just a Christmas bell that you can put on a tree and this very intricate, very fancy reindeer. Now let's move on to some word art. This is a lot of fun and it really catches people's attention. This one says, no coffee, no worky. We can all relate to that, right? This one's made from two different colors of wood. It says, you are my sunshine and the sunshine is made of yellow heart, of course, and it has a walnut base. This piece behind it, uh, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this is actually a phrase. And you look at it and you see the, the hearts inside the word love. So the title of this piece is Hearts in Love. Now, this is something really fun that a lot of people like to do. These are portraits back here. You can see this is the old Duke over here. and Well, actually, that's Marilyn. This is the Duke over here. And uh, this is Marilyn. These are done from patterns. And uh, they have a lot of intricate work in there. Well, let me move Hootie just a little bit so you can get a better look at Marilyn. There you are. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Boy, dating myself there, right? Now, let's take a look at some boxes that you can make on the scroll saw. Scroll saw boxes are a lot of fun to make and uh, people really appreciate them. They're great gifts. Let's take a look at the little Valentine heart box here. As, as I lift off the top, you can see that there's an inside where you can put candy or jewelry or maybe they even that engagement ring. What do you think of that, huh? Okay, and we put that back on there. Next, I have a little uh, box with my initial on it. And as I open this one, you can see I put a little change in there. You can use that for earrings or cufflinks or anything else you like as well. Next, I have a little yin and yang box. And uh, you can uh, see that that opens rather uniquely. And now, another box that I made is an example of another kind of scroll saw work. This box here is called uh, the uh, cat box, of course, and it's intarsia. Now, we have three different kinds of wood that we used in this project. We have poplar. We have black walnut and we have cherry and we also have yellow heart so I guess that makes four. But these are cut out individually and then put together in kind of a puzzle and you use a sander to shape them. Now as I take this off you can see that there's a compartment here for uh, jewelry or whatever you'd like to put in there and there are actually three compartments in this box and they all go back together like that. That's a very popular kind of uh, scroll saw work. Uh, called intarsia or painting with wood. Uh, we also have some puzzles over here. These puzzles are uh, very fun to do and uh, people really enjoy getting them. This is a, a kangaroo puzzle right here and you can see that I can lift it up and it'll still stay together. If you were to tilt it one way or the other or lay it down, the pieces should slide out very easily. So you can take it apart and put it back together many, many times. Have an angel and a giraffe family here as well. 
Down here, we have an example of compound cutting. Now these are unique because they're cut on all four sides. As you notice, as I turn this, you can see that the, the cutting takes place on all four sides. This actually comes out of the middle of a block of wood. And uh, it's kind of really fun to cut these because once you cut them, you peel the wood back away and this is what you have left from the inside of the block of wood. This little piece here is where I put my glasses when I'm not using them. They just sit on here like this and uh, then you always know where your glasses are when you can find them. They're on your nose, as you can see. So those are just some examples of the kind of fretwork that uh, I do on my scroll saw. Well, fretwork and the other things as well. Now, it occurs to me that we haven't really shown you yet what a scroll saw is or how it works or what it does or what some of the parts are. So follow me over to our scroll saw and we'll take a look at the parts of the scroll saw that are common to most all scroll saws. So here we are, we're back at the saw now, and this is my scroll saw. This is a DeWalt 788, and it's pretty typical of the scroll saws that uh, most uh, experienced scroll sawers use. They range in price all the way from $100, which is kind of a very basic saw, all the way up to $2,000, which is like the Rolls Royce of uh, scroll saws. And most of you are going to be somewhere in between. If you're just starting the hobby, you'll probably want a lower end saw to find out if you like the hobby or not. But here are the things that you'll be looking for that are common to most every scroll saw. First of all, there's the blade clamping system. This one has a screw clamp here at the top. There is an identical one below the table of the scroll saw that holds it at the bottom. Now you clamp this in place by turning this screw here on, and you don't need to tighten it very tight. You just tighten it down so it's snug. Now the next thing you're going to do is tension this blade. You see this blade right now is pretty loose in here. This is the tensioning apparatus for the DeWalt saw. And you'll notice you can just tighten it this way. And how tight do you want to make it? Well, you want to make it tight enough that it's going to stay in one place for you on the saw. I just, pull, I just tightened it too tight and it pulled it out. So I'll go back and I'll uh, tighten this up again here and we'll uh, then get the tension we need. Now we're going to do a couple of things to test the tension on this blade. We're going to push it, see if we can move it much side to side. We can't. Good. We can't move it very far front to back. Another test is to pluck it like this and see if it makes a nice sharp ping. Hear that? Okay. That means you're ready to cut. And uh, you want to remember the setting that you put on your tension knob. This one set it just a little more than three. Okay. I'll back that off and you unscrew your clamp and then you pull your blade out, you lift the arm and slide the blade through the hole in your workpiece and then just reattach it and keep on sawing. This apparatus here is a dust blower and you want to point this so that it blows the dust away from your work. This particular saw also comes with this handy light that shines the light right on your workpiece so that you can see it very well. The next thing I want to show you is the table of the scroll saw. Notice this one has a nice big teardrop shape. Some are square, some have uh, different shapes to them, but they all be nice big work surfaces for you to work on because when you're scroll sawing, you're going to be turning your wood from side to side and around in circles. That makes this next part of the scroll saw that I'm going to tell you about very important. And that is the throat of the saw. And the throat of the saw is from the back of the blade to the back of the saw. This one has a depth of 20 inches. So that means you can cut a piece 20 inches long in here without worrying about it whacking against the back of the saw here, which you don't want to happen because, uh, you know, that will throw your cut off. Uh, 20 inches is pretty standard for the mid-range scroll saws. Um, you can get them as big as 31 inches, the lower end saws come at about 16 inches, but the throat depth is very important. Final thing I want to show you about on the scroll saw, well actually there's two things. So first we'll show you is the speed control. This is the speed control right here. It's a rheostat and you just, you know, slower or faster, whatever you're comfortable with is what you set your speed at. The next thing is the switch. Now you're going to notice something strange about this switch. I've got it permanently locked in the on position. 
and I've got a piece of duct tape over it. That's to keep dust out of there. So how do I turn the saw on? Well, I happen to have everything attached to a foot switch on the floor underneath the scroll saw. When I hit that foot switch, the, blade, the saw comes on, the light above me on this uh, dust hood comes on, and the dust fan starts up. Now, a foot switch does not come standard with most saws, but I'd highly recommend that you get one because it's much better to uh, have the saw go on and off with your foot and then take your foot off the saw rather than having to turn this switch on and off and wear that switch out. And so those are the basic parts that are common to most scroll saws. Well, that's all the time we have for this video. Be sure to check out other videos in the series and go to my website, terryscrollshop.com, where you'll find a link to my YouTube page and links to other information, as well as pictures and ordering information too. And don't forget to look me up on Facebook. And when you do, spell shop the old fashioned way, S-H-O-P-P-E. Thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time in Terry Scroll Shop.